Yep. Cool. So welcome, those of you that have made it. Um, this is our first of a series of webinars that we're going to do um, from the eo for sd uh, projects. So I'm just going to give a very quick overview of what we're up to, um, and then I'm going to hand over to our speaker. So the idea is that it's a maximum one hour session with a bit of talk and then time for questions. Um, if you've got questions, please put your hand up in Zoom or feel free to type things in the chat and I'll try and keep an eye on that. As ever, please be muted unless you're talking. And as I mentioned, we're going to record it and make it available. So the people on the call today are myself. So Christine Sams, I'm the project lead for the eo for sd Marine Cluster. And we've got Stephen Carpenter. You can see there and uh, the work today is Stephen's work that he'll be presenting. And then we also have got Maggie Casida on the call. Um, Maggie's leading the stakeholder evaluation work pack on the project. And she's also our best French speaker. So she's going to present the French talk this afternoon. And very many thanks to you, Musa, for all the hard work organizing it. I've had insight into how many different folks you have to contact, so much appreciated. So I'm just going to go a quick overview of the project. So <clears throat> just to make sure everyone's aware, so this is a European Space Agency project. Um, we're, we've been running now for nearly three years um, and we're supporting various World Bank projects um, around the world. And it's all about um, making better use of Earth observation data as part of a toolbox for um, enabling sustainable management of our marine and coastal regions. Uh, West Africa is actually the biggest part of our um, project support. So we've got lots of activities there. Um, yeah, and we'll talk more about them through these webinars. Um, I just want to emphasize that the project is really about a partnership approach. So the data products that we've produced have all been defined by users, by people at the World Bank, people in the WACA project. Um, and then the idea is that we do some of the processing and that's then made available <clears throat> open access and validation and uh, evaluation of the products and application of the products is all done locally with that really important local knowledge expertise wherever possible in situ observations to validate the Earth, Earth observation data. We've got a project website, the link's there, and we've got a data portal, which looks like this image on the left. So you can, it's a clickable map, you can go and see what data sets are there. So just briefly in terms of uh, West Africa, um, we've delivered a, a range of services there. So coastline change we're going to talk about today, but also various other data sets, land cover mapping, water quality data is available. We've done some demos of pollution from land. We've got an oil spill detection service that's running at the moment. Um, and we've We've done some benthic habitat and bathymetry mapping in areas where that's viable. So from now onwards, we're continuing to try and do more and more validation of the products and access some more in situ to really um, get better value out of the Earth observation. We want to support users in the countries to use the data that we process. So this webinar is part of kind of starting more of a dialogue around how, how the data sets can be used. And then we're also looking at how we can increase the value of the data by integrating them with other sources of information. So for example, the oil spill service that's running, you know, we're trying to find ways to connect that to AIS data that the countries have access to, to really understand where the spills are coming from. Alongside the delivery of data products, we're also doing training. So hopefully some of you have participated in the training that Sue Hybe has delivered um, in April last year, we did a session in February this year, and probably going to be another set of training towards the end of this year. <clears throat> so that's probably enough of me. I'm going to hand over to Stephen now. So Stephen is part of um, Satellite Oceanography Research Group at the NOC and his work's really focused on satellite derived coastal and nearshore data products and he does a lot of work on shallow water benthic habitats and shoreline mapping. Um, and he's going to use um, a story map in ArcGIS to talk about his data and this link uh, is here and it's also in the chat if you want to have a look at that. So Stephen, I'm going to stop sharing and let you take over. Okay, thank you. Right. So hopefully you can all see that. Are we all good? 
Yeah. So um, yeah. So I decided to do this uh, slightly differently to to normally and try to uh, have a bit more engagement in the process. So if there's any questions, yeah, just pop them in the chat and then I'll try and get through them. Um, and then we'll we'll have a bit more of an extensive Q and A session at the end. And um, so yeah, this this is just a um, a story map that I've created about the, the what we've been doing all over the world to do with shoreline change. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So this, uh, this is a web page that you can just join uh, and have a flick through at any, any time after, after this presentation. So the, the link will be in the chat box and I'll, set, I'll send an email out afterwards. So um, feel free to have a look in your own time as well. So shoreline change is obviously a massively important thing to monitor along the coast and Coastal systems consist of natural and human systems that provide a wide variety of regulating, provisioning, supporting and cultural services, which are hugely important to human life. And it's estimated that more than 44% of the global population are likely to reside within about 150 kilometres from the coast. So yeah, it's a, it's a really important thing to measure. And without a lot of tidal information, um, and a lot of large scale techniques to measure shoreline change. Uh, it's quite difficult, or it has been difficult without uh, satellite data to monitor change at such a large scale. And uh, the, the most recent global study showed that around 24% of the world's sandy beaches are eroding more than half a meter a year, and 28% of them are accreting. Now, whilst this study was suitable to understand global change, um, accurate and high resolution data is important to understand dynamic coastal regions. And in this presentation, uh, I hope to show you how we developed a tool analysis to get this accuracy um, over such a, a, a large scale. So here are the regions that we're focused on in EO Foresty. Uh, and this obviously ranges all over the world and we've produced shoreline change data for these four regions and obviously one of those being West Africa. So we started this in uh, uh, April, June last year. So that's, that's when I was uh, first assigned to do some shoreline change mapping. And so we've got a bit of a development since then, um, depending on uh, the region just to make some improvements depending on cloud cover which I'll go into very shortly. So in order to do such large-scale analysis we really need to um, use some kind of cloud computing because this uh, enables you to just perform um, really um, really in-depth analysis and um, large-scale analysis over this time period. So in this case, we're using Google Earth Engine to just download some small subsets of images, which would otherwise be really um, time-consuming for computers to process. So just this example on the left shows that we can just take a small subset of the coastline and that reduces the size of the image from about a third of a gig to only six megabytes. So yeah, we, we use Google Earth Engine to just download all the data and then and then process the shoreline uh, along the coast. So the method methodology that we use here is inspired by this tool called Coastat, and this is how a lot of our uh, tool is is based on. Now this is just an open source um, uh, repository which is on Git. Hub, and it just uses Python to enable users to obtain a time series of shoreline position at any coastline uh, across the world, any beachy coastline across the world. And so, as I said, it, it uses this Google Earth engine in the cloud to just retrieve these images and then retrieve certain bands in order to process the shoreline. So, as you can see in the in the center image here, we've got um, just a red, green, and blue uh, image, just an optical image on the left, and then 
in the center we we classify this image into land or other class uh, white water sand and water and then we use this uh, water difference index which is the blue to red image on the right and we draw a shoreline between the sand and the water and this is usually the high water line when using this this cosat tool so this particular tool just takes individual images that uh, from a satellite and so when we measure the or delineate the shoreline at this certain point of time it means that uh, we capture the image at a certain tidal state and so if we're looking at change over time and we take these images throughout different months then we often capture different tidal states so measuring change can be um, quite challenging and so to combat this we wanted to just make some imp improvements to the existing tools that are available uh, by using median composites so we basically just averaged all the images throughout the year um, to produce a single image and then measured the shoreline using that. And I'll go, go through in a bit more detail what I mean by that. And one of the uh, other limitations that we have is the ability to measure change. Now we do this by just drawing a series of tran transects along the coast and then finding the distance which has changed over the course of time. Now, the tool uses this uh, method that we see on the right, which if we were doing this at such a large scale, uh, the national scale, then obviously drawing these transects would be a very time consuming process. So we also wanted to make some improvements to be able to do this automatically. Now, a uh, third, third limitation that we had was also the fact that the output was um, uncleaned. So as you can see on the left, um, here's just a series of lines that is really messy and this uh, has to go through a series of processing steps in order to just get the um, final coastline. So we also wanted to make this more automated. So here are so some of the things that we, uh, we've developed and some of the things that I've just talked about. And yeah, so we wanted to increase the automation process at the national scale, include these medium composites and adding the cleaning process and change statistics. So these are the additions that we made in uh, April to June last year. So what is a median composite? Well, this is just a series of images stacked together and a, an average taken out from uh, one pixel. So as you can see on the left, we've got say five images and we, we're just gonna take one pixel as an example. And these values here are those um, reflected values that correspond to those in that pixel. So as you can see here, maybe values of uh, 260 uh, are the ones that are free from cloud, whereas the high value means that there's a high reflectance value here uh, and that corresponds to cloud. So if, if we take an average or the median or the middle number, um, it means that we can retrieve an image which uh, is, represent, is an average image throughout the, the entire year, which is free from cloud. So this image on the right just, just demonstrates this process where a few of the most cloudy images are uh, removed and then we mask some clouds and then we merge them together and this is an example of just an annual median composite um, from Togo and Benin between May and 2020 to 2021. So when we first developed it we were working in North Africa and doing some analysis in Morocco and Tunisia and we got some really interesting uh, facts about what change has happened at such a national scale. And so here, here are some of the, the values about how much uh, severe and extreme accretion and erosion was happening in both those countries. Now, this is obviously uh, really useful information 
at a national uh, level for governments to plan um, along their coast. But it was also useful to see at a local level the impact of changing defence systems and what we could do um, with them. So this data set on the right, if I just zoom in using this map, these are the shorelines that we found using our data sets. So the red here, the red lines here are from uh, starting at 2000, the year 2000, all the way to 2020 in the pink. And so here you can see a clear difference where we have some breakwater systems built in 1990 and then the change in defence system uh, in 2018 to a groin. And so, yeah, we can see that the, uh, the shoreline is changing towards those and that is impacting along the coasts. So if I follow this, this, this line here, so the, the purple is where we've got the, the groin system being built. And then further down along the coast, you can see that there's some accretion, um, which is obviously what the um, local defence managers needed in order to protect these, uh, these regions at the Solimar Hotel over here. So yeah, this, this information is really useful um, just to uh, have as a coastal planning, um, planning service for coastal managers. So when we moved to West Africa um, and we started performing analysis, we realised that when we were building these median composites, they weren't as smooth as we, the ones that we had in Morocco and Tunisia. So these images here, as you can see, there's, there's a lot more cloud in Cape Coast in Ghana. And when we moved back to uh, Morocco in Casablanca, and we, we then searched for another uh, series of images over the last six months, you can see that there's a lot less cloud. So, yeah, when, when, we were, when we were doing this analysis in West Africa, we needed to improve on the methods that we already had. So we did this by improving on the cloud mask. So here, this video shows the cloud probability layer uh, for Sentinel-2. And so using this data set, we can just build a lot better cloud mask than we did before. And it also gave us a good uh, idea of where shadows were. So we can just build a smoother and um, more complete composite. Now, this is a, a similar uh, method that we use for Landsat uh, by using the, the Landsat cloud score other algorithm, which is all available on Google Earth Engine. And so, here we just we just see the uh, the difference of this improvement. So, on the left we have just a the simple algorithm that we, that we had in North Africa, and then if I scroll the image down, you'll see that the, the coastline is a lot more visible. So, before if we just had these cloudy images, some of the shorelines would be would be coming off into the the ocean because of these these cloud artifacts, whereas now it's a lot more smooth. So the, uh, the algorithm delineated the shoreline a lot more effectively. So after it, making these improvements, we then seek to find some validation data. And with thanks to the geology department in Dakar University, we managed to do so. So uh, they collected a series of GPS points at the low and the high water line. And so these are just seen across the coast here. So in order to find how accurate our shoreline was, we converted both of the, these points into a, to, into a series of lines and then take, took the midpoint in between the two. And this is the uh, uh, means uh, shoreline in uh, purple that we would expect to see and then the Sentinel-2 derived shoreline and that we derived from the satellite data. And as you can see, the majority of the time, it's very, uh, very accurate compared to what we'd expect to see, uh, apart from maybe, maybe this area, which uh, is, uh, is making the whole 
um, accuracy, a lot less uh, effective. But overall, for the, this whole area in Pekin, the average error was just over five metres. So we feel that it's, this is a, a good representation in order to measure change over time. So after making this uh, validation, um, after processing this validation, we then extended all of our analysis to the series of countries shown here. So from Mauritania all the way down to Benin. And we also did some shoreline work in Sao Tome and Prince Now, um, we're, we're open definitely to increasing this availability of this data. Um, and I'll give you our information at the end because we'd be more than happy to perform some shoreline change data um, in any of your countries if, if you'd like. So it's important to note that this is still in development and at the minute it's still limited to beachy coastlines and it's also not validated to a large extent. So the work that we did in Senegal is um, the limit to what we've done at this point in time. But it would be really great if anyone had some any more data on the uh, high and low water lines around the coast, as this would be uh, very helpful to validate further. So here we're just assuming that we will have a similar accuracy to the, the results in Pekin of about just over five metres. So we do have some alternative methods that we're looking into. Uh, in order to measure non-beachy coastlines. So here's just some data that we collected in St Vincent and the Grenadines. And uh, this is using Sentinel-1 SAR data. So this will be um, really useful because Sentinel-1 data is uh, able to look through clouds. And so a lot of these places like the west coast of Ghana and in Sao Tome uh, that have very, very high uh, cloud prevalence, then SAR data uh, would be fantastic to use. So we're hoping to develop these products later this year and into the future. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm, I hope that you've learned a bit about what we've, we've been doing in the project so far. And yeah, as I said, um, there's a lot of things that we can do uh, to help if you're, you're interested in this kind of data. And um, this, obviously, you can look up the original COSAT tool because that might be help, helpful for some like shoreline, short term uh, shoreline analysis. Uh, and if not, obviously, yeah, you can contact us and we can produce some data for you. Now, we hope to also branch out and uh, produce our own GitHub code for the, the annual composites as well. And um, this is something that we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch about um, once we develop it. So yeah, thanks for listening. If anyone's got any questions, it would be great to, to hear.